Well, I made it to Las Vegas and it doesn't look too scary. I thought I'd be wearing my uh, ninja t-shirt. So we're sitting right downtown where all these casinos are. And the gentleman in the red truck came over to say hi. He watches my videos. And my machine is somewhere over there. See in the middle of the frame, you see the big booms of the um, cranes. So my drill rig is somewhere there. So this, so basically this is like a staging yacht, pretty much. See lots of space. You know, you would, I would never guess that there couldn't be so much room. You know, in downtown Las Vegas. Yeah, it was a bit difficult to get to get here because uh, you know, some turns are really are really sharp and there was construction I was supposed to turn right uh, some I forgot what's the name of that street is but my my Google Maps was says turn right and I look and it's construction so the other lane is closed so I cannot go into the you know into the opposite lane it was too tight even with a booster I could not make it so I had to do like a big loop probably a couple of extra miles and come on this uh, road and basically I'm near the if you guys know Circus Circus like a very weird name but there's a casino called Circus Circus so that's where I'm loading right on this Circus Circus Drive and I fueled up this morning in Kingman and for some, for some reason fuel prices are crazy over there you know uh, because I was actually east of Kingman it was 311 per gallon I just got like $300 worth of fuel because I was empty but then as I was passing the actual Kingman and then further up on uh, US 93 I saw 271 275 but mostly these were like small truck stops you know where you have even some of them you know regular gas stations but still much much higher than you know in uh, Texas Missouri right over there I had 239 I think the last time I fueled it was 239 so big difference and so I spent the day in uh, at the truck stop now I have full hours I have uh, no I will I won't have any issues uh, entering Canada because of that 14 day thing where you need to have 24 hours in 14 days right so and actually I even had my 36 hour reset so even for US now I have the entire 70 hours back you know so I'm ready for anything uh, and uh, and they have no idea what the weight of the machine is if they did not know before actually now it looks like they don't know more if that's possible because uh, when I was already pretty much parking in Kingman they say um, Sergey would this be a problem we actually looked up uh, the bill of lading that they sent us and it says 108,000 pounds and I'm like you kidding me right uh, I'm going I said I'm picking this up I just drove 2300 miles and I said we negotiated the rate based on 105,000 pounds you understand that yeah yeah no problem but that's like a big blunder you know on the, on the part of the broker so uh, when they give you one weight and then you drive one week towards your pickup and it turns out it's actually heavier which of course can be a problem because of the uh, spring uh, spring axle weight restrictions in uh, Alberta but I told him I'm loading I'm not leaving this load I need the money especially with this in these uh, uncertain times right so we are loading and then we're scaling and then we're ordering permits so so that's what's happening and the guy that came over he says uh, they told him that he might be here all day and he's picking up some uh, some uh, small piece like from a crane 
but my broker was pushing me pushing me make sure you're there or can you guarantee us that you're there on Tuesday March 17th I said yeah I'll be there and so I did my part right I drove like a good boy all this extra miles because then you see I didn't have time to find a load you know again like the economy is crazy now right up and down but what's funny is that I still get I still get uh, offers of loads so it looks like it's not completely dead maybe now it's actually might be better for a specialized carrier like me because a lot of people are you know afraid to work it's kind of like what happens on big holidays you know like Christmas right where people most people want to spend time with with the family and since I don't care I don't have a family and I don't believe in Santa Claus so uh, I only believe in New Year's Eve New Year's Eve and maybe October Revolution Day but that was a long time ago now I'm institutionalized in Canada so I don't believe in the October Day either so now for me it's mostly uh, New Year's Eve and and so yeah now it can be like that you know because this all the truckers are afraid um, a lot of truckers are afraid to work right and this gentleman works for TV TV brothers so it looks like they're looks like they're escorting him see like these guys on small carts that's those are the guys that we are supposed to follow and he has a all aluminum Mac Mac uh, 48 foot step deck I think yeah you see that and that's the loading area over there where the big crane is in the distance see and I think what I'm waiting for is because the the crane the my machine is probably not ready because the overall weight according to the booklet I found online is about 145,000 pounds and so that they, they have to take off you know counterweights like part of the boom and stuff like that so because they told us 105 or 108 we'll know in a second once I'm loaded right but the guy on the phone my local contact told me it was um, he says we are loading at 6 we are loading the flatbeds at 6 so if you're here earlier let me know and I said before he told me eight o'clock so I said no I'll be there at eight because I don't want to go to I don't want to sit in Vegas because they have so many cases of of uh, coronavirus here right so I was sitting there in Kingman kind of like feeling a bit safer but it was still a bit scary but so yeah people are working people are driving I see lots of cars on the road and I came 93 and then 215 uh, I-15 and then I jumped off I-15 and was following these local roads trying to get to this uh, circus circus drive and construction guys are working see on top of that building over there uh, on top of the building far far away but in the middle of the frame you see guys in uh, yellow yellow safety uh, vests so they're working so they're not laid off so we are working truckers are working and uh, riggers are working but I'm not wearing my my t-shirt because uh, <laughs> no but that was actually was that was cool you know I was trying to I was trying to find uh, how to how to make a, a mask and I don't want to cut you know I don't want to cut my uh, my t-shirts and so check this out I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you wait so hold on uh, is it turning one second okay guys watch closely because I'm gonna show this secret procedure only once I learned this from a five-year-old kid who uh, 
who posted this video back in uh, 2014 and if you want to see the original it was called how to make a ninja mask out of a t-shirt I kid you not and of course it's not <laughs> it's not surgical but mostly I like that this is uh, kind of like maybe help some people would help some people to combat fear so basically you're just putting it over your head just as if you are about to put it on right so like normally right and you go like this just over your nose and then you go you grab the end and you put it like this over your head and then you take the these and you tie it down and you see and it covers here covers here and you look like a ninja you know and then you can even put on your your hat why are we so bright yeah you can even put your hat but that's what I, I wanted to wear over here but I don't see anybody wearing anything but you know I don't care if I see a big crowds that's what I'm wearing that's my new my new look so three-axle truck tandem Jeep but each axle has eight tires and then tandem in the back and tandem booster in the same setup so each axle has eight one two three four five six eight tires so this guy is picking up something real heavy oh and it's a day cap so it's just uh it's uh it's probably a local move and his truck is a freight liner no air cleaners you know how they say that for heavy stuff you're supposed to have lots of air and a big big uh radiator so this guy just has a classic Freightliner Coronado. Wow, his whole trailer is so maneuverable. Because all his axles in the back turn. And uh, yeah, I cannot get any closer, but so that's pretty cool. Pretty cool rig. All right, one comment about the uh, masks and uh, the situation. Uh, it's too bad that looks like, first of all, too bad that looks like uh, YouTube does not really like videos on, you know, on all these topics. Uh, as soon as I put the word pandemic in the subject line, uh, and then I use some keywords like, you know, coronavirus right away they cut my monetization it says uh, limited or no ads which of course is great for you guys the viewers but it's not too good for me like I'm waste I'm spending my time making these videos I'm you know wasting my energy I come up with ideas uh, but if it if it attracts attention that's why I put the link to my other successful video uh, which is doing pretty good about the delivery of that uh, scraper 621 so we'll be okay but i just wanted to mention i just saw a guy here nobody is wearing uh masks right and then i see a guy actually today this is the second guy i see uh wearing a mask and uh, the first guy i saw at the truck stop when i went to the morning i told myself i would start wearing like the ninja warrior mask this morning but nobody's wearing them you feel kind of stupid you know but i go inside the truck stop i was looking for water no water like they have water but they don't have these uh, you know they don't have these big jugs anymore so you have to buy the overpriced you know regular uh two pint bottle or like one liter right and of course that costs much more and so i grabbed two bottles and there's one guy and he has this kind of like a painter mask which looks like totally ridiculous you know like a round one and i can see it has openings on each side like 
and the guy has some weird lemon bright yellow winter hat and it's like 5 30 in the morning you know i got up at like five no even i think i got up at like 4 30 just couldn't sleep for some reason because over here it's like three hour difference back at, at home in ontario it's, it was already like 7 30 right uh, and so I, I'm still not totally into this time zone because I just came from there and so sometimes you wake up at 3 and I'm thinking wait that's already 6 in Ontario you know but I, I was tossing and turning until 4.30 local time that was a bit better but then I go there so I just wanted to say my reaction you know how they say that don't wear a mask unless you're sick um try and then you try to protect other people from your from the poison inside inside of you right and actually that's the reaction i'm getting you know like i see this guy and i'm trying to stay away from him because i see he's going into one aisle i'm like holy i want to go into the other aisle because i don't know maybe he's sick you know maybe he's just wearing that mask because nobody else was wearing a mask in the entire truck stop except this guy you know and that's the reaction you know you 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 think that you know maybe the guy's infected and now i just saw another guy again i see i don't know maybe 15 20 people like there's drivers waiting right there's uh, riggers talking among themselves you know sitting on their little carts you know uh other guys are loading that doing something with the crane um so there's about 20 people and one guy looks like a driver was walking in a mask it looks like uh white i think no it, maybe it was blue like a surgical mask and again i had the same reaction you know you start thinking wait a second so this guy is probably infected you know so when you start wearing a mask if you choose to do so just that just take that into consideration that actually it can make your life more difficult because people will will look at you like you are a criminal you know like you're guilty of something you killed your grandma you know or you stole a million dollars from a bank uh <laughs> but that was my reaction i was just like steering clearly far far away from that guy at the truck stop because okay he's buying water i'm out of there i want to go and and look at some uh i don't know key lock key chains, you know then he's he's all of a sudden he was like doing eight you know number eight inside that like what what are you looking for he went to water then he went to coffee and i'm like staying far far away from him <laughs> but um anyway so but the day is gorgeous you know like if you're sitting just you sit inside your truck and you don't listen to news you know check this out you're sitting in one of the most beautiful cities in the world some people might argue that but you know i like all these mountains like i can see mountains in the distance these beautiful clouds oh that's what they're doing so this guy with this 20 axle rig he's loading uh oh okay it's a three axle crane i'm guessing 115 120 000 pounds like i load these but where they just had two axles because you know when it has so many axles it, of course it, it's much much you know bigger weight and also it's longer oh wow that thing turns on the turns on the hold on let me increase magnification you see that crane over there so that thing look it turns on this on almost on the spot so all wheels are turning and this guy left i thought he he stopped too short no he stopped okay like enough room so he knows what he's doing so you see he parked his truck just enough to leave a gap for that guy so it's tadano tadano crane uh, but why he has so many axles like imagine all his axles are are uh, eight tires just like this guy check this out this guy see he has a tandem in the back but each tandem has 
eight wheels. So basically he has 16 wheels. It's the same as a four axle trailer, you know? And of course that's, uh, I forgot what, Cozad? Yeah, yeah, I think it's a Cozad, those crazy, crazy expensive uh, AGNs made in California. And they all have these uh, eight, eight uh, tire axles. You see that we have some activity, but this guy just showed up, right? This red guy? He just showed up and they're already loading him, you know? I've been here an hour, nothing is happening. All I see like these guys over here, they had step decks, you know, land doll and some uh, XL. Looks like a 35 ton, because it only has two axles in the back. Well, these guys are waiting. And they parked me here alongside because of course I'm so long. But I know they told me my machine is somewhere, somewhere there somewhere that's the actual loading site you know where all those uh, booms are sticking out in the air so hopefully i can load today because time is a wasting well i'm sitting here probably has been here two hours so i decided to make myself i wanted to say a sandwich but instead of, i'm saying protein cocktail and I'm using old coffee mug because this way I don't have to wash it, right? And my regular one is over there, but then this stuff gets stuck and you have to wash it. Anyway, so now I'm just gonna shake it, shake it good and hope it doesn't spill all over the place. See if it works. Disposable cocktail container. <laughs> it's spilling. Colonel Sergei is having breakfast. Yeah, it dissolves, it dissolves better in that mark. Seems that everybody's loading but me. This guy is loading some humongous zoom boom forklift. And his truck, his truck is over there. Yeah, some crane parked behind me. I thought he was uh, here to help me with the Jeep, but then what did I put the Jeep, you know? I don't want to lift leave it here somebody might steal it right uh, okay then I see some zoom boom driving over there so one of these guys should be able to help me yeah some uh, local guy just stopped by he said he was a uh, state what they call it hand like a manager basically here loading stuff so I saw two I saw two fans today and then a couple of guys emailed me no, very cool. All right, the guy looked at my trailer, I showed him the trailer, and then I said, okay, it's getting chilly, because yeah, it's a bit, feels a bit chilly, you know? 
and and he he has his hands in his pockets i you know and he says okay i'll shake your hand when it's you know in the summer when all this stuff well we don't have the virus i said cool so nobody's shaking hands stay away you know keep the distance So yeah, maybe I might be here a while. Oh, and I was researching um, ports. Found the obscure port that's a bit closer when you're coming from Las Vegas. But nobody picks up the phone. I'm calling the Canadian side. Goes into voicemail. It says that the, the officer you're calling is only available 8 to 4 but the port is open 7 to 11 so I and I find the phone number on the Google Maps right and Canadian customs they never give you the actual phone of the crossing whereas US customs you can find the phone number you know so I looked at Google Maps at this on the US side I call and one of the uh, messages said you know if you want to talk to an officer press you know one or two whatever and I press one and I thought it would go into voicemail. No, some guy picks up uh, officer to you know. And I say, hey, um sorry to bother you. You know, I'm a trucker going to Canada. You have, you see big trucks, semi trucks crossing into Canada past your port? I said, I know your US side, but I'm just I cannot raise anybody on the Canadian side. And he says, Yeah, trucks go there all the time, so not as many as uh, as in the main port, which is sweet grass, you know, coots, but he says it's still a commercial commercial cargo port. And, and I said, you take trucks as well, like when you're coming out of Alberta. He says, yep. So we good. So I found the port, which is uh, closer, might save uh, some money on fuel, you know. If they turn me around, they turn me around, you know. That's the worst case scenario, but uh, I will know. Oh, and then I called my um, company that does my uh, manifests, e-manifests, and they have all this data because I'm using, you know, their services to create uh, e-manifests. I said, you guys, have you ever heard of this port? And I gave them the number, like this border crossing port. They said, yeah, looks legitimate. Yeah, um, open to trucks, commercial cargo. I said, cool. Thank you guys. So now all I need to do is just get my load, you know. This guy's already finished, he's done. The forklet is on the deck. So and here's that uh, Volvo VNX. See wow, check this out. There's three axles, you see? And you don't see these trailers actually are Rogers, but that's the oldest manufacturer. On their website, they say they've been building these trailers since like 1902 and 1904. And actually, they are the first. They're the first who came out with this idea, removable gooseneck, you know. And I was looking at them, Rogers trailers. And they are in, I think they're in Pennsylvania, somewhere in Pennsylvania, no, not too far from Canada. I, I even, I called them and they said, no, we're not working directly with customers, even though they have sales department. But I, of course, that sales department is for, you know, corporate, uh, like for dealers. And they have one guy in, in Canada, but he's such a, you know, difficult to work with person uh, but anyway so I, w I was looking at that you know I was looking at those uh, Rogers trailers so if you guys want to see some cool uh, trailers just if you go to Rogers I think it's Rogers trailers dot com oh, this, this guy's back yeah Cozad you see that's Cozad trailer one two three four five six seven eight yeah sixteen 16 wheel Jeep. Check out the neck on that thing. The neck on the trailer. <laughs> what is it? 50 feet long? And the trailer is, I'm thinking it's probably at least 10 feet wide. And then he has this dolly in the back and it's all steerable. 
uh, they say a guy when he's backing they can start that little motor in there like a Honda or something and they can steer they can like I think maybe even the guy from the pilot car can steer uh, that dolly you know so this guy even though he's so long but he does not need a lot of space to uh, turn around Boy, that's a lot of work. That's why they pay us the big bucks. So basically, the guy came in with a huge forklift. Uh, like long forks. I was afraid they would send some uh, tiny little baby forklift. No, they bring the whole mama. You know, the big mama. <laughs> came in, so basically, they unloaded the Jeep. And then the same forklift uh, came. I dropped the trailer. She came from here. And they used the sling, so there was no danger to these connectors. And she flipped it. Then I hooked up to a Jeep 605. And of course, you have to connect all these, right? Once the neck is flipped, you connect those. And then uh, I backed under the Jeep. And sometimes what happens is that, you know, when I was parked, when I was parked, the truck was, you know, pretty much near the, <laughs> the front of the truck was here, right? And you see this mess I made uh, because again, there was a uh, high pressure inside the hose as I had to uh, tap that uh, valve a little bit to release the pressure. Uh, we have to find a better way because it's messing up my, messing up my style. But anyway, so the truck was here, right? And then when I hooked up to the Jeep, I have to put on my Ace driver cap not to hit these. Because, you know, if you hit these, you can hit the post. And then basically electricity goes down to the entire Las Vegas. And then they say, hey, who did this? Oh, Colonel Sergey. So we don't want that. And so it was tricky. And you see how I, you can actually see how I'm sitting at an angle. Uh, the truck is pointing this way because I have to keep it straight away from these and of course it's very difficult to see you know it would be cool if the somebody who helps you they watch your blind side but that guy was watching this and of course the cool thing about the Jeep is that you can hook up to the trailer even if you're at a slight angle right and I never changed this so this sits like this all the time the, the most forward position but over here it was a bit short, it was somewhere here. So when I hooked up to the Jeep, I said, hey, I need to change the, I need to move my fifth wheel. And the guy says, hold on. I try to move, right? And he says, hold on. I try to move with the Jeep. And I look outside. <laughs> and in all this excitement, I forgot to raise the landing gear. <laughs> I forgot to raise this. But actually, I wasn't going anywhere. I just wanted to to um, to move the fifth wheel, you know. And so, but we raise it, and then you push this. You put air in the suspension, right? And then I think everything went in smoothly. I didn't have to hook and raise the neck. It was like perfect height, you know. Uh, I didn't even have to drain the suspension. Basically, the Jeep went under. But again, the guy was watching. I said, if you can see. If the kingpin is, is about to hit this, let me know. And we can drop the air, but he was watching, you know, it was very helpful to when somebody's watching uh, at least one part of the rig, right? And then, of course, when you hooked up here, I, now my, you see, now everything is hooking up here to the Jeep, right? It's much shorter, like over here, you don't need such a long hose, and so I had to wrap it around and tie it down over there with a bungee cord i'll put another one later when i'm loaded and so yeah you the truck is hooked up to the jeep right all the hoses are here you hook up to the neck right and then the neck extension is hooked up to the main neck and then you have these right and so yeah once i was hooked up because the trailer was on the ground so i just started the hydraulics raised it Put it on that travel block, position two, 
the trailer is still locked but of course now it's going to be tricky so now because they made me do this because we're still waiting for that machine uh, i'll have to drag the neck away with the jeep and then of course you know when you reposition well this guy will help me so i have i have guides that can help me but it's a bit more difficult to uh back to the trailer with the neck right it's easier to do it with the truck and here everything looks good so we have full blown legitimate two plus two all airbags are fine we're doing position four for now i'm gonna drop it to three probably depends how uh, how heavy this thing is nobody knows for sure and here everything is good i hope wow yeah it pushes a bit too much see more weight on the on the on the on the rear because of the shim actually that shim you see it makes a big difference but again i don't know right i never did this before but i just see that the airbags here are bigger than here so but again i'm empty so once i'm loaded this whole thing will go down what's our size over here well i'm empty now right there's no point but yeah this one you see how this one is big because again there's no weight i think we should be okay like worst case scenario i can uh, drain the air from this axle and try to take the shims out but it's not going to be easy because we put them under this pin so you'd have to take the pin out uh, whereas before i had them uh, I had them on the opposite side, but this way it's much better. So I think we got everything is connected, everything is working. Oh, it's the air. Yeah, I drained the drained the air a little bit. But usually, yeah, you want this one to be a bit a bit higher because that's where all the weight will go right because this is so close to the to the load and then i'll just spread it out and then i can always uh one two three four five six seven i'm on hole seven so i actually i'm looking forward to really how this thing is gonna drive because now see before right this spot was like somewhere here right because this axle was over there so it should turn much better now yeah so that's my monster monster rig loading a john 10 john 10 pm 23 uh drill rig and We'll be heading to Alberta. Well, wow. it's a bit too much pressure there. I cannot turn it, but it should be good. Let's see what's happening on the other side. Well, they cannot get out because, first of all, they have pins on the opposite side, right? But just Let me see if I can hammer them a little bit. Okay, where's my where's my hammer? All right, so I I got out my kingpin, right? Because you don't want the kingpin to hit your jeep when you see. I got two positions here, right? So you don't want the kingpin to hit your
for the directions because like I said it's somewhere over there behind the fence A bit at an angle you have to turn this way a little bit but closer just keep going and then closer when you're closer do it like this if you want it only the right track go like that okay if you want only the left track do that on so now all I need to do is just back under it uh, make sure I can hook up and then we're gonna back all the way forward because the center of gravity is uh, too close to the front <laughs> 